Hello, welcome back. Today we uh, have committed some time to learn some TypeScript. I haven't written TypeScript um, much, uh, but I know the language and uh, I've been doing CoffeeScript and um, JavaScript across my career. So this none of these is completely new to me. Nonetheless, let's start from the about section and, uh, and see how far we get. The target as usual is to do the hello world in TypeScript and then try and do five exercises on the top of that as part of the 12 and 23 initiative. We are almost there. 10 languages out of 12 have been done. Uh, and so, yep, it's going to be TypeScript today. And I'm still thinking about what the last language will be because there's quite a lot of interesting content on exorcism and I'm still deciding if we're going to want to go into something very, very foreign and, and not very known about or, or maybe something a bit more trendy. So let's see. Anyway, for what concerns TypeScript. So TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript created at Microsoft in response to frustration developing large scale application in JavaScript. So a superset means that uh, JavaScript should be valid TypeScript, but not all TypeScript is valid JavaScript. You can think of it that way. In a large JavaScript project, knowing what properties you, your own objects have, what arguments your functions take, and what type they need to be can become difficult. Similarly, since there is no ability to intelligently inspect JavaScript code, when you include a package like from NPM, you have to keep the documentation up so you know what methods are available and what arguments they take. TypeScript solves these issues. It is currently an open source project hosted on GitHub, which means you can go and browse the source code and um, make contributions if you want. It supports tools for any browser as well as Node for any host and uh, on any operating system. TypeScript compiles to readable standards-based JavaScript. Okay, this is very nice. It adds a flexible type system to JavaScript, in addition to interfaces, uh, custom types, and modifying the syntax of some ECMAScript uh, features such as classes. Types are optional and flexible. For example, you can specify an argument is a string or a number, uh, so you can use so-called union types. And types allow tooling available in most code editors to that improve the development experience, such as code uh, completion and method detection, both in your own code and in packages you use. It supports many upcoming ECMAScript features. You can think of ECMAScript if you don't know, if you've never heard that or of that before as uh, the um, standard uh, and the request for comment sort of process uh, and um, continuous improvement process uh, for uh, uh, for the JavaScript language. Uh, and so it includes features like uh, async await. Uh, TypeScript can be written in object-oriented or functional styles. It is compatible with all existing JavaScript packages uh, and it transpires into clean and readable JavaScript as we've heard already at the top. And I was reading a Twitter thread a few days ago where someone reminded the community that the big reason why TypeScript uh, was created was to um, tackle the, the again the difficulty in managing large scale JavaScript project in particular uh, you know how often uh, even if the language has some shortcomings the uh, ID and the ecosystem around developing it might be good enough to actually support engineers in, in the most difficult projects and in the case of JavaScript uh, I was reading about about one of the rationale for coming up with TypeScript was how can we make it easier to um, support engineers in the writing of JavaScript, JavaScript code, code, what is missing. And for example, the lack of types was something that was hindering the ability of uh, developer to even develop tools to uh, improve the developer experience around JavaScript. And so from that sort of things came uh, naturally in the sense that in the pursuit of making JavaScript more uh, easier, let's say, to, to develop, uh, TypeScript was born. And so uh, that's a very interesting genesis um, 
for, for a language which, which is now so popular as TypeScript, TypeScript actually is. Okay, so looking at the um, hello world, a couple of things uh, catch our attention, I think. One is the fact that we are exporting a class, which is not something you see in uh, other languages. Uh, and this, again, if you've been doing a bit of JavaScript, you know that in order to have something available in a different file, you might have to uh, import a module and that was exported uh, with, this, with this keyword. And then the other thing is we define a class and then we define a static method on, a, on, a, on the class or a class method uh, also called in other languages uh, and we uh, then return hello world. Easy enough, a few too many lines for anyone's taste, but I guess this is a fully fledged example where we're defining a class and exporting it. So let's start from there. And I think if we start look at what we actually have here, we just have the export and then a single function, uh, hello, which returns a string. We can just say this is hello world. Uh, run the tests. And then submit as we usually do. And move on to the next exercise. Uh, too far we know as an exercise it's very easy and it's also good to do because it shows us uh, something about default arguments in, in function definitions so let's go for that uh, too far defines a simple function returning a string that says one for name one for me and name will either default to you if no name is provider or show provided or show the name of uh, uh, of a person if that was passed as an argument okay uh, also interesting way of uh, guiding us through the through the exercise here we've not seen this before um, of course we need some sort of parameter uh, here uh, so there's going to be a name argument and the type of that will be a string i guess which as you can see is uh, lowercase rather than uppercase and i'm assuming that that's the convention is to space uh, put a space between the colon and uh, name and type but maybe i'm wrong and we'll, we'll fix that later um, and then what we'll do is we probably want to define a default value for this which is u uh, as you can see because if no name is provided then u is used and i think defining a default ar uh, a value for the argument is very very simple just equal and then the default value uh, after the, the type declaration if, if any the other thing we need is some uh, string interpolation and this we might have to look up so if i do typescript <coughs> string interpolation and then there's probably some backticks or something like that yeah so the backticks are the do the magic here and then you can see a dollar sign and the uh, curly braces so we can do this we can say one for name i don't know if i even need the curly braces let's put them in and then comma one for me and again these are back ticks just so you don't get them so that you get don't get confused with regular quotes probably remove all of this and try and run the test also we will have to explicitly return i think if we don't return explicitly then we're going to have some problem and while we're one for you one for me oh yeah i forgot the dot at the end so let me just add that and run the test meanwhile typescript return optional just checking whether the return statement uh, keyword is is uh, necessary i think it is yeah return all over the place so unless we are using a lambda to define or even with lambda even with lambda apparently so yeah 
let's say return is always there and then if it's a single statement function probably we don't need that so we can submit this and continue sorry submit mark is complete moving on okay what else have we got where do we go next so leap again one of the exercises we've done the most determine if uh, a year is a leap year there's this slight exception when uh, a year is divisible by 100 in which case it's not a leap year no matter the fact that it's divisible by four and then we go back to normal for 400 and this is usually an opportunity to play with the um, integer division operator so if we do typescript uh, um, integer division and remain there we can see that we have the usual percent for remainder and whereas the integer division actually is a not great because we have to go through the trouble of doing a math floor and then on, on the result of a floating point division but okay for now we're just going to need the, the percent so the, the remainder operator that should be enough so we'll um, again we have to provide the year here we can say year and I don't know about the type here, so let, let's leave the um, let's leave the type annotation out of it, and let's see if that's okay. Also interesting to see how we throw exceptions here, and we can then go and have a look at tests as well, just to see what they look like in TypeScript. So if we do, so we're gonna have a year, and we'll also we can also say that we're gonna return boolean, maybe lowercase. And maybe it's just bool. Let's see. Uh, so we we'll do something like year percent four equals zero. Then what happens? Let's try and run this. And this should be boolean. Also, we need to probably provide. I think the. <clears throat> excuse me the type is optional function was declared type is neither void nor any must return a value okay so we need to return here again easy to forget if you come from other languages so return year percent four equals zero and then parameter year implicitly has an any type do we have to provide the type i'm just a bit Puzzled. And do we say numeric? TypeScript primitive types. Let's see what we've got. Handbook sounds good. Um, number. Okay, we're looking for number here. And I'll keep this page open because we'll come back to this. So we go in with a number and return 8% 4 equals 0. And then this is something we've done in other exercises uh, as well. So and then year percent 100 should be should not be zero. Otherwise, um, no matter the fact that it is divisible by four, the year is not a leap year. And then alternatively, so alternatively, if the year is divisible by 400, then we're still in a leap here and hopefully the precedence of operators is okay here we might have to put this in parentheses the last bit let's see no okay so happy with this moving on and actually going back to the editor for a moment just wanted to have a look at the tests uh, and see what they look like so we're importing this very file i think uh, and in particular we're importing the 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 is leap function from the exported object <clears throat> and then you can see writing tests resembles what you might have seen in ruby or um, crystal or scala uh, and maybe even javascript if you've been using test libraries like what like um what was popular these days, I don't know. I remember the times of Mocha and Jasmine as, as test frameworks and runners. Uh, but yeah, this looks very familiar, hopefully. And so you have a describe block 
uh, with the top level things that you're trying to test and then a set of cases that you're testing against. I'm not sure about the X it, but we'll just leave it for now. Or actually, let's look it up. TypeScript test sit. Karma, maybe. Maybe this is some testing library related thing. Maybe if I look for JavaScript. Not sure. Okay, I can see Jasmine exit function. Maybe that's a way of ignoring the test. And what we're looking at is the first version of the of the test suite. But then, yeah. So exit. It's like it, but instructs the test runner to exclude this test entirely. Okay. And I think what's going on here. Uh, and I was reading Jasmine somewhere, which is one of the, yeah, wrap it around Jasmine exit function. So Jasmine is a um, test library for JavaScript, which of course we're using through TypeScript here. And as you can see, the example resembles a lot what we saw. So a, a main block on the describe, and you can have as many described as you want in your test suite and then inside each describe you can have a number of it uh, blocks where you test a specific bit of functionality. And you can see expectations are quite easy to write and read quite naturally. That's one of the reasons why Jasmine was so popular back a few years back and I guess still uh, to this day I can only imagine. Anyway, so and I guess what Exorcism does after we pass the first test is it uncomments the other ones and pass them all. Okay, so we are happy to submit this. Mark the exercise as complete. Maybe we can go for something a bit less mm, straightforward. Pangram might be a good one. It was very painful when I worked on this, I think. I tried doing this in uh, Julia and that was um, a bit of a not what I had expected um, but we can give this another go and the idea here is to check whether a sentence has every single letter from A to Z inclusive and this is a way this is an opportunity to work with sets for example um, or any other or there's also other approaches and I think we could you know count down and uh, keep track of which letters we see while while iterating uh, through the through the sentence, and hopefully JavaScript will make it a bit or TypeScript will make it a bit easier for us to uh, iterate over over a string. So we'll definitely have some sort of message or string of type string, and we'll return a boolean. Uh, telling us whether something is a pangram or not hmm. and okay we can we can try this we can say in TypeScript what we want to do is we want to take our string we want to split it and that should return can we console log or maybe we can just you know what we can actually just Open the console and try some JavaScript. Yeah, okay. Can I clear? No, okay. But let me make this a bit bigger. Please ignore everything else. And we can just try. This is, of course, JavaScript, but that's okay because TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So if it works in JavaScript, it should also work in TypeScript. So if we have uh, some sentence here and we do a split like this we get a list with every single character and then can we turn this into a set I think we can and the constructor is what this requires a new so we do new set which should be a primitive type for uh, 
JavaScript. And this returns this string here, right? And what we can also do is we can generate a set with all the alphabetic letters, uh, with all the alphabet letters. And what's the best way of doing that? Let's see. JavaScript alphabet array. How to generate alphabet array in JavaScript. Hmm. We could use the fact that we can go into, we can think of this as some sort of integer representation on of, of uh, ASCII of ASCII code characters, and then go from these numbers to the alphabet. So because there's a because letter A has is encoded as 97, then we can just generate numbers from 97 plus uh, all the way to 97 plus 26 and then convert into uh, into a character with from car code. Okay, let's see if we can do this. And uh, <clears throat> so if we do this, and can I just encode the 97 straight away? No, maybe not. Okay, let's let's keep this as is. As you can see, we have a set. If I do new set with this, then I've got my alphabet here. So we can just copy this. Probably put it here as a constant, say alphabet. And say, and can I mark this as const? Uh, yeah, and we can also look for ts constant, so TypeScript constants, and it says we declare them using the keyword const. Okay, they are block scoped just like let. A value cannot be changed. Okay, we seem to be on the right track. So this is the alphabet. And again, what we're doing here is we're taking, we are, I don't even know if we need to do that dot dot dot. Yes, okay, so we are, this is a short end to get 20, an array of 26 elements. I wonder what this evaluate to, so if, if it's all undefined, yeah? So it's 26 undefined, yeah? And then we map through and use the index on the map to just go from i plus 97 to the character cor corresponding to that. Okay, and so if we sort of connect the dots and just say, so this is the set of letters that we find on our string. We also want to take the string and make it go to lowercase, yeah? So that we don't have to worry about uppercase and lowercase because the pangram don't, doesn't, you know, check, doesn't, doesn't care about capital or lowercase. So can we say to lowercase? Yes. We can try it out if I do capital S. Yeah. So two lowercase is what we're looking for. And so what we do here is we do take the string, go to lowercase, split it, split every character, turn that into a set. And again, and then what we can do is we have this set, which is the, call it arg. And then str is some, some string, right? So str equals some long string and I'm adding some special characters and then we do this is the set we have and then can we do arg minus so let's define our alphabet like this and then if we could do either an intersection between alphabet and uh, yeah that would be a way we intersect alphabet and the arg set and then check whether that corresponds to the alphabet because the sentence is only a pangram if each letter appears at least once. So the intersection between the two sets should give us the entire alphabet, which is the smallest subset in the in that in that scenario. Yeah. And how do we do that? How do you do uh, TypeScript? And again, 
something you you find yourself doing a lot when writing TypeScript is looking for the JavaScript documentation for something. So that would be JavaScript set intersection. Yeah. Where do we go? What's the best? Let's go to the Mozilla web docs. And if I look for intersection spelled properly, we have ooh filter. No. Why? Okay. Is there no intersection defined on sets? It only has the has element, uh, the has um, method. Okay. What about difference? Is that a thing? No. Also, something one has to do manually. Okay. So the idea with intersection is we take a set and then we filter and we keep the element only if it's also in the other set. Okay, we can do that. So the idea would be, uh, and then we can remove this. Okay, so we have our arg and then call it arg set. And then what we do is we do arg set. It doesn't matter which one we call filter on. We take each character And we keep the character if it's also in alphabet. So we do alphabet dot has character. Yeah. Yeah, that should be easy enough. I think maybe a better way of doing this not that it matters that much, but if we just go through alphabet, if we just go through 16, uh, 26 values for alphabet and check on arg set, which might, which might be much, much bigger, that makes sense, I think. And we just check if arg set has that character. Eh? And then in the end, we just check whether this is the same as uh, the alphabet itself. I don't know if a double equal will do. We can just check for equality on the documentation equality between sets. And so let's see equal. No, let's see if we have a double equal sign anywhere. Value quality. Okay, value quality is based on the same value zero algorithm, which we can look up if we want. It used to whatever. This means none is considered the same as none, and all other values are considered equal according to the semantics of the triple equal operator. So, what do we use? Here. I guess we just use double equal operator and then see what the tests say. And of course, we have to return, yeah? And it's good that the compiler should complain here. Yes, it does. So we return. And I can probably close this. So. And of course, we need to declare that arg set is a variable yeah filter does not exist on type set okay because set don't come with that method defined hence what's going on here we have to expand the set into an array and then run the filter on it and then turn everything into a set again this is very much not the ergonomics I would like to have here but fine so the idea here is we can't call a filter on the alphabet itself we have to uh, 
expand the alphabet into an array with this syntax and then run the filter on that and then return wrap all of this into a set less than ideal but fine i guess if you're working with sets day in and day out you probably are using some of Epler functions or a library that you wrote this should be it except let's see hmm are turning everything into oh let's see how do we define yeah and then I'm not too convinced about the equal sign object yeah. let's go and look at the tests so we're doing to B, okay. That's fine. To be true, yeah. So what is uh, breaking here? So when we do, for example, when we do perfect lowercase, we're getting false. Um, and it might be that we're not comparing the right stuff. Okay, the other thing we can do is we can just check the size, right? We can check the size of the set. And if it is 26, then we have every single letter. So if we do size equals 26, would that work? Because we start with a set of 26 characters, we then filter, and if they're all there, then we're good. Not the most elegant solution, I would argue, but it's you know doing the job and of course as i said you probably have some nice utility functions on set and you then don't have to work with this slightly untenable mess of code yeah hmm interesting that the compiler doesn't like me breaking things into multiple lines not like this at least uh, and in particular, it seems like it's trying to return undefined for some reason, or at least I think that's what's happening. So don't upset the compiler. Let's see if this actually works. Okay, moving on. Let's submit. Okay, not impressed by set, but again, as I mentioned, there's probably utility functions that you can implement. Okay, let's do another one. Um, hmm. Bob's one is um, a bit too much typing, but what about the RNA transcriptions? We can play with strings in TypeScript, if anything. So given a, given a DNA strand, return its RNA complement. Uh, both DNA and RNA strands are a sequence of nucleotides, as of course we all know. Uh, the four nucleotides found in DNA are A, C, G, and T. I'll let you read them. And are on the other side matched by A, C, G, and U. And this is the mapping between one and the other. Okay, we're gonna want to go from DNA strings to RNA strings. Yeah, so we take some DNA string and we return a new string yeah we can remove the exception throwing and then we'll probably need some sort of mapping let's call it const mapping or nucleotide nucleotide let's say dna <laughs> to rna uh, and just define this as an object that goes from g how do I do this in JavaScript? Just column C and then from C to G and then from T to A 
and finally from A to U and what do we do with this? we probably just go through every element of the string so we do this, the usual split approach where we go DNA split and then we iterate over the string I wonder if, if there's a more efficient way of doing this, right? so ds iterate over string characters is there a way of um, doing that in a function? we can do a for each but that's quite side effecty we can do this oh this is nice okay but again we are creating these intermediate objects anyway so fine I mean let's try this um, it seems to be something we, that is coming back uh, a few times so let's let's use it so we take the DNA we split it into um, single characters and then we map on the list that we get so for each element we take a character ch and we go and we look it up in the DNA to RNA object or dictionary in this context and that's it and then we what we want to do is we want to join the values together so we can just do join and I don't remember I never remember how to call this function in JavaScript so JS join array it's just a method on array okay so rather than doing this we just do map and then dot join and we want to join on empty character let's see if this is getting as close oh and of course you want to return yeah and then element implicitly has any type because expression of type string can't be used to index type cannot be used to index type there must be something wrong with my definition of um, an object no index signature with parameter type string was found hmm is there a, I don't think there's a difference between char and like characters and strings right ts ch object object types okay oh is it that I can't go from string to string so maybe I want to use an actual type ts map yeah something like this this is probably what I want and then we can get set and so on and that's a more okay so let's look at what this looks like uh, yeah because I guess if I wanted an actual JavaScript object then I should have gone this way with no quotes but then yeah that would would that work yeah that would work right Let, let's try it out and then maybe move to an actual map which is maybe a bit more idiomatic does this work hmm yeah doesn't seem to like that okay let's let's try with the new map approach so map is the better type I guess to use in this context and we are in parentheses like this and then we have an array of pairs okay so I can open the square bracket and close it down here and then we have pairs where we have a string comma another string and then I think we're gonna be okay with the types right and so as you notice 
the compiler and I guess maybe some type of linter or additional check is actually being quite strict on types here and for a good reason I guess I think we are good let's see if we define this properly mm. and then did you mean to call do you mean to call DNA to RNA get yes that's exactly what we meant thank you compiler and then we should be good again okay. some progress right and then what happens then so if we go to RNA and we provide a character that is not in the dictionary then we want to throw an error saying invalid input DNA okay um, so let me just do this so we can check when we look at methods right when you look get or head okay we can, we can we can check whether a key is in the mapping with has and then if it's not there we can throw an exception that should be it because all these tests we are failing are about invalid input DNA yeah? so let's see if we can break this down so this nice short lambda we actually have to make a bit longer which is fine and then we can just say so we do a tiny bit of error, error handling here where we do if um, DNA to RNA has the CH key then we go here else we throw an exception is it raised throw throw error is it error exception i don't know can i do new error or something like that and we don't need a, an end right so nine and eight if okay so parenthesis here required and we need to return here so something we need to do anytime you see curly braces is we need to return the value explicitly otherwise we are returning nothing yes yes we made it okay so a tiny bit of error handling here which is annoying but fine um so if the key is there we return dna to get key to rna get key and then if not we just throw an exception and we just join okay one might want to just refactor this a bit but this is good enough for our current purposes okay let's push this also let me check something uh, no recommendations okay Let's try to do another one. So we have. Hmm, this looks nice. Randomly generate Dungeons and Dragons player or characters. Each player starts by generating a character. Okay. Um, they have six abilities: strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. And scores determined randomly. Okay. We have to roll four six-sided dice and record the sum um, of the largest three dice okay you do this six times one for each ability this sounds like the reason why programming was invented in the, in the first place helping people play dnd &D. your character's initial hit points are 10 plus your character's constitution modifier <clears throat> hmm, i love this okay and the random character generator follows the rules above and then for example you throw four dice you discard the one take the sum which is 14 and assign it to strength and so on and so forth and then because i've assigned three to constitution their hit point will be 
3 minus 10 sorry 3 yeah so what the constitution modifier is minus 4 okay your character's initial hit point are 10 plus your character's constitution modifier should be 13 where's the constitution oh the constitution modifier is whatever you find by subtracting 10 from the constitution value dividing by 2 and rounding down and that's what actually leads to constitution of 3 a modifier of 4 and then hit points of 10 minus 4 which is 6 okay brilliant i think we can do this get modifier is its own thing and you can see we've encapsulated all these method into methods into a class and these are static methods okay so no no state here and we have six values that we want to generate well, let me just copy them six abilities as they are called here okay what are we returning uh, let's look at the tests get modifier we seem to be interested in the modifier generate ability score and this returns what a number okay so they just want us to throw the dice and return a single value for example we say ability score equal generate ability score and that returns oh okay now we need to throw four dice and then keep the value of the three higher ones okay this should be easy and i don't know if there's an actual test verifying that we're doing the right thing there but maybe okay so what do we need to know we need to know how we generate random int numbers which is usually about generating a number between zero and one and then multiplying it by the max that you want to see and taking the floor like so and this is something you do so many times when the, this exercise is that eventually you write it somewhere and then copy paste it all the time so you generate a number between 0 and 1 and then our maximum is and this is a number we want to be able to generate so if we put 6 there that's okay because we're going to be taking the floor of that value and go to 5 and then we can add we can add 1 later so we do 6 and we want the minimum to be 1 so we do 1 plus a number between 0 and 5 because it's never going to hit, hit 6 yeah because the random number generator generated is never going to be 1 it's usually numbers between 0 and 1 1 excluded 0 included okay and with that this is how you generate a single number right we can say public static I hold I and return a number which is between one and six. Yeah. And then we can do here we can do uh, one to five one to one to four. So four times we We just roll the die so we take we just roll the die like this I don't know if we can do under um, um, underscore here to say we don't need the value and then we just want to filter or like maybe sort remove the max then sum let's see so get ahead of ourselves um, hey octa elliptical which languages do i know mister um thanks for the mister that's very classy um it's hard to say what, what do you mean by knowing a language how do you it's like how do you say that you know someone um so i would say 
when it comes to actually working with languages, I would say I'm familiar with Scala and Ruby mainly, although I'm a bit rusty in, in Scala. And I've been doing some non-work related activity in, uh, and exercises in Crystal over the last few years. And then JavaScript is a language that you end up learning even if you don't want to learn it. So I would say these ones. And if I go back in time, Python is a language that I used to use back at, at uni. So is that a satisfactory answer to your question? What about you? What, which languages do you, would you say you know and you know? Oh yeah, yeah, take your time. Meanwhile, we'll uh, just uh, try and figure out the, the, how to roll the dice, yeah? We can actually do the trick we had yet earlier, just in case the specification change. And basically you take an array of size four and then you expand it into four undefined values. And then you map that into this. And then we can say JS sort array hmm. okay we have a sort and sort returns it sorts the array in place I guess but sorting is a bit awkward right in JavaScript so I wouldn't just go there because um, been bitten by this in the past compare numbers yeah. So I think we need to go this way. Just say sort and pass the comparison function. The comparison function in this case just takes one minus the other. Otherwise sort is just very weird in JavaScript. So if we do sort, like the default comparison is not number comparison, right? It doesn't check for whichever one is the biggest number. So if we have A and B, we want that to look at A minus B. This should actually sort our numbers. And then we want to slice and take the elements from the first one to the last one. So first to third. And I think, how do we do that? So JavaScript slice. We just want to pop the first element out, basically. Slice one, yeah. Slice one will remove the first element. Also, I have to remember, sort perform doesn't return anything. I think it just makes. So we would have to, okay. Take our dice scores, then call dice dot sort, and then take dice dot slice one and then reduce starting from zero or even without and say take value a and value b and take the sum of the two so a plus b and then i think if we were to return this this would possibly pass some tests who knows and of course we have to declare our variables we can do a let here uh, sort does we're not doing any destructive assignments so that should work and sort makes uh side effects on dice okay what else couldn't find name roll die do you mean static member dnd roll die yes is this the best way of calling that num that method it might be so that we have to actually do the scoping resolution ourselves yeah Let's see if we pass a few, right? So ability to generate, so ability to generate random abilities within range. Yes, so we are passing this test and then each ability is only calculated once. Yes, we seem to be um, passing this and then ability modifier. Okay, everything else is about ability modifiers. So we passed the first set of tests and now we just need to get the modifier for the ability value for a specific ability value and we said that we do ability value minus 10 was it the 
the hit points are 10 plus the constitution modifier you find your character's constitution modifier by subtracting 10 from your character's constitution divide by 2 and round down okay so we take 10 from ability value we divide by 2 and round down meaning we take mats mat no, floor and of course return does this work maybe One test failed. Let's see what we did wrong. None and undefined. Expected none. Received undefined. Okay. This is intriguing. Random character is valid. Okay, let's see. We create a new DD character. We then look at the hit points. I don't know if we can fix this actually so because the we're probably looking at the very first uh, assertion here so right we do verify that character hit points is equal to this value and I'm saying that because as you can see we have expect none to equal undefined and as you can see the second value in each one of these First of all, the test, the assertion is different. Is it to be less or to be greater than something? Whereas here, this is the only one that can have a, an undefined here, right? So how did that happen? Maybe it's not our fault. Maybe it's the uh, test that is not helping us here because we do because we don't have access to the rest of the methods, right? New D&D character, and then we do character hit points, again, which we don't have, to equal character constitution, but we're not... Oh, do we, do we do this? Shall we define a constructor here? We should, yeah. Okay, so that's my bad. So it was sort of implied that we want to define a TypeScript class constructor. That makes perfect sense though, right? I was wondering. Um, constructor. Couldn't be any easier. And then we just do this dot something equals, yeah? I don't know if there's any shorthand for this, but well, I'm happy with this. So we do constructor. We don't give it anything. And then what we do is we define each one of the skills or abilities, if you wish um something like this right so we do this dot strength equals and then we call generate ability score for each one of these i don't know if there's a better way of doing this maybe there is you probably could do something like you could do this right you could say hey look take these as strings for example, and these are all our abilities, which you can probably set as constants. And I'll do that. So let's say let abilities equal. Or maybe just uh, okay. Let, let's try the easy part. Okay, so let's do let abilities equals this, and then we iterate over the abilities. We say for each, we take the ability and we say this ability equals generate ability score. Not the best readability, maybe, but. It should do the job. And then line four. Uh, 
element implicitly has an any type because expression of type string can't be used to index type. Why can't we use strings to index um, stuff? That's a bit sad about it, but maybe it's for the best. Okay, let's try and do it the boring way. Right? So if we do abilities, sorry, this dot charisma equals something like this and we forget about this and just very patiently type the same code for every single ability yeah something like this I don't know there must be a better way of doing this right strength does not exist on type BND oh okay okay how is this done we need to declare it okay fine like this is there sh short ends no we don't deserve short ends we deserve to type boilerplate code so so be it okay we can do that boilerplate here we come so we do copy the list again and then I'm, I'll make sure I um, look at the document at the community solutions to see if there's a much better way of doing this so this looks a bit silly uh, so we just say the name of the field and then the type yeah so and in this case it's a number Property charisma is no initializer. Is it one that I misspelled? Charisma, yes, it is one that I misspelled. So no need, to, no need for semicolons. Let's remove all of them. Let's not panic and add semicolons to things. Charisma, okay. And then run. Cannot find this. And again, we need to resolve, well, basically help the type tree compiler figure out where this method is defined and if this is a static method we have to scope it apparently with the whole thing with the old name uh, okay i know what we need to do because as part of the initialization um we also want to define uh let's go to the script down here we also want to define the character constitution so we do it here and we say look so the character constitution is given by the depends on the modifier and we need to set it here so we do constitution equals dnd character equals 10 plus dnd character get modifier or we're left on our own devices here this dot constitution well it's not is it not uh constitution hit points sorry so hit points equals 10 plus and then do we need to declare hit points i guess we do hit points coming to your question in a second want to see green first yes okay we'll, we'll go over the solution a moment right so we have to find a bunch of uh, fields for the dnd character hit points are a uh, derived value that comes from constitution and so once we have computed the constitution with the generated ability score we determine the modifier value for the given constitution that's done with some uh, simple math down here we just taking 10 away and dividing by 2 and taking the floor of the value and then the hit points are given by 10 plus that modifier value so that's super we can submit this and then i'm going to check what other people have done on the website well i think we're ready to wrap up the stream because i'll tell you why because we have gone through six typescript exercises and now if i go to the dashboard and go to the 12 in 23 challenge as you can see, we have TypeScript, among others, 
which means we're good. Um, and so I think tomorrow or by the end of the week, we'll pick another language. I'll show you which ones I'm thinking about, and then I'll, I'll uh, stop the stream. But I'm really thinking about, so red is one I'm thinking about which seems to be some sort of scripting language that is that can be embedded into um, other languages as I understand it um, and is used for for example video games or graphical UIs and so this might be interesting and then the other one I was looking into was I think JQ because I know I know there's a new JQ course like this came out a few days ago and I've heard great things about it and it's got a syllabus so it means that a lot of thought has been put into putting it together so why not this might also be fun and with that thanks for uh, watching so far I'll see you before the end of the week one language left and then we'll figure out what to do with the rest of our time yeah <laughs>